In 1955, Cyril Northcote Perkinson, a British naval historian and author, wrote an essay for The Economist. Accidentally, the first sentence of that essay became a popular law named after him, the Perkinson's Law. This law was republished in the book Perkinson's Law, The Pursuit of Progress in 1958, translated into many languages and became popular in business and management. This one sentence had this huge impact. So what is Perkinson's Law? Hello everyone, my name is Saurav and I welcome you to Exports. Today I'm going to talk about Perkinson's Law. So let's get started. I came across this law in a book and then researched more about it and I found it interesting because I could very well relate my experiences with this law. I liked it so much that I have even written a blog post on exports.com and now making this video. This law is about productivity that will help you get more done in less time. So what does the law say? Well, Parkinson's law says that work expands so as to feel the time available for its completion. That means the more time you have, the more time the work will take. That is the time taken to complete a work is directly proportional to the time available to complete it. If the work has to be done tomorrow, it will be done tomorrow. If the work has to be done in 10 days, it will be done in 10 days. And we all have experienced this somewhere in our life, whether it is preparation for exams, school homeworks, creative projects or an office project. When you have more time, you will procrastinate, browse internet, research, scroll social media and do everything which is not supposed to be done to complete the work. This is also experimentally proven that when a person is given more time than what is required, they tend to waste it. So work expands so as to feel the time available for its completion. I will share a common example of Parkinson's law. If you are or have been a student, you have experienced this. When we a student have four days to prepare for an exam, we spend the first three days doing negligible work, checking syllabus, counting the number of pages in each chapter, collecting notes and doing everything but not preparing. The actual preparation starts from the fourth day, that is one day before the exam, when we would gather all our energy, focus only on the goal, that is to pass the exam, be concentrated and work like hell. If there had been only one day to prepare for the same exam, we would have completed our preparation within one day. Here preparation is the work that expands to feel the time available for its completion. When we had four days, it took four days to prepare. When we had only one day, it took only one day to prepare. So where do you think we are more productive? Of course, when we have less time for preparation. Similarly, you can connect it to other works you do and everywhere you will find that work expands so as to feel the time available for its completion. So till now we saw what is Parkinson's law and what are its examples. But how to use Parkinson's law in our day to day life and why do we need to use it? Well, as I said earlier, Parkinson's law can help you be good at time management and can increase your productivity. If you are a leader, it would help you to make your team more efficient. So we need to know how to use this law. And in the next two minutes, I would share five simple steps that would help you to implement Parkinson's law in your day to day life. The first step obviously is to identify the project where you want to implement Parkinson's law. The project can be anything, a college assignment if you are a student, an office project if you are an employee or writing a blog post if you are a blogger, anything. The second step is to identify the time. Now this is the critical step to implementing Parkinson's law. You need to identify the time required to finish the project without diminishing the quality. The time needs to be reasonable, it can't be too short or too long. I will show this to you with the help of a graph. This graph illustrates Parkinson's law very well. In the x-axis, it's the time required for completion of a work. And in the y-axis, it is the effort you put into completing it. The more the effort, the higher the performance. Now this line shows the maximum effort or peak performance which is desirable. So you need to find this time which forces us to work in peak performance. If the time is too much compared to this time, the performance will decrease. Similarly, if the time is too less, it would also decrease the performance. For example, let's say you have to write a 2000 words article. Now, if you are assuming the required time to be 30 minutes, it would be too little. At the same time, 10 hours is too much. For writing a 2000 words article, you would need around 3 hours to complete it. Now that you have identified the time required, the third step is to set the deadline for it. 
The pressure created by a deadline can be one of the most powerful factors that would help you to finish your work within time. And don't underestimate deadlines, they are the only reasons why we engineers function. The fourth step needs no explanation. It is you have to work. You have to work with all your effort and concentration and try to finish the work within the deadline. Now that you have finished the work, the fifth and the final step is to revise the time you assumed in the second step. If you finish your work way before the deadline, you have to set a stricter deadline the next time you do the same work. And in this way, you would be able to implement Parkinson's law to uh, complete a particular project in less period of time and be more productive. So let me sum up everything I have said in this video. Parkinson's law says that work expands so as to feel the time available for its completion. This law can help you be more productive at work. And for this, you have to set reasonable deadlines, not too short, not too long, and then try to finish your work within the set time. That's all about Parkinson's law. I hope you found it valuable. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I keep posting about fiction and non-fiction books. Thanks for watching. Meet you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye and take care.